afternoon. I'm Professor Ellen Rustico. Welcome to Bay Path College's annual ethics lecture. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the gentlemen behind our ethics program on campus. It is by the generosity of a gentleman who believed in ethics that we come together today. T. Mark Futter wished for our world to become more ethical. Mr. Futter chose Bay Path, specifically our students, to gain more experiences and opportunities to learn about doing what is right. This past summer, Mr. Futter passed away. As he wished, we will carry on our annual ethics lecture. Today, the T. Mark Futter Program for Ethics and Leadership and Integrity in Action brings Reverend Irene Monroe back to speak with us. Her topic is to choose or not to choose, exploring how a personal and collective agency of choice ethically impacts schools, self, and society. And at the request of Reverend Monroe, we will get right to her lecture. She has asked just to cut out all the introductory parts so she can have as much time as possible with you. So please welcome Reverend Monroe. Well, hello again. Um, you have to say hello back. Hello. Okay, um, I come out of the black church tradition, so uh, you, you have to do call and response. And uh, seeing so, they, they, they are, I'm loving you already, okay, and I haven't said a word. All right, seeing such a sparse group here, I imagine that many of you are here because um, Professor Restico and these two wonderful professors and others probably mandated that you come and do a reflection paper. Uh, so, but any event, you're here, um, you're in prison for at least 45 minutes to an hour with me, and, uh, and I'm gonna keep you every minute. Um, I first wanna say here, um, I wanna apologize uh, for my teary eyes uh, with the uh, weather, and today is not reflective of it, but with the weather being unseasonably warm, uh, things bloom a lot sooner uh, than they normally do this, this uh, spring. And so um, I'm fighting not only a cold, but um, allergies. So um, um, please forgive me for I'll be dabbing my eyes a bit. I wanted to take something quite strong, uh, like a Bloody Mary, but um, <laughs> I realized with a Benadryl, I'd be totally knocked out. And, um, but any event, so uh, to be alert and not put you to sleep, um, um, I opted not to do that today. But in any event, um, I, I, my, my, my godchild said to me, uh, um, Auntie, you got the cooties, so I just want you to know I got the cooties and my eyes are tearing. Um, I want to thank uh, Professor Rustico and the uh, lecture series again for bringing me back. When Professor Rustico sent me an email and asked me would I come back, I said in the New York Minute, um, I had such a wonderful time and it's an absolute pleasure uh, to come here and, and talk with you once again. Um, last year, an interesting thing happened. I lost my earring and um, a kid here, one of the students, found it. So if that student is here today, I want to thank that student. Is the student here? Well, uh, is the student here? You, you're nodding your head. Okay, who's this? Are you the student, darling? Oh, you the girlfriend, thank, girlfriend. Oh, okay, not only do I thank you, oh, I'm wearing it, okay? Okay, and I'll keep close tabs of it. So our topic today, and, um, I, and I think it's been, I, if I'm correct, your theme all year has been about choice, has it, has it not? All right, all right. So, um, so today, we're going to talk about and wrestle with this whole idea of choice. Um, but one of the things I want to say was so interesting. Did any of you this weekend, and I was lucky, I got to see it on Friday. Did any of you go see The Hunger Games? All right, all right. Um, wonderful, Isn't it, I hope you enjoyed it. I, 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 listen, it was just absolutely wonderful, particularly very close to the book, um, the um, Jennifer Lawrence, Badass, really good, make me want to take up archery. Uh, but I can't shoot straight on a good day. But nonetheless, it's a wonderful um, uh, film that brings up a lot of ethical issues around choice. And one of the things it made me think about as I was preparing for this lecture is that 
Well, if you live in a dystopic society, we cannot talk about choice. So thank God that we live in somewhat of a democratic society where we can re really begin to talk about choice. One of the things I, I was thinking about, I could go on and on and talk about to you about choice, why you should do it, how it will empower you, you know, why you'll live a better life, blah, 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 blah. That is quite boring, particularly at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, okay? So one of the things that um, I decided that we would do is that I was, we were going to discuss a couple of cases together that requires a choice one way or the other and talk about uh, how we come to render certain choices over and against another. Now, one of the things I want to say here is that there's no right answer because it's your personal choice. But I wanted to say this, though. In the choice you make, I want you to think about a couple and at least five thoughts here. Five thoughts. So for those of you who are d d uh, in this lecture this afternoon for a reflection paper, uh, I'll read them out slowly, OK? But I want you to think about this when we talk about choice. Which option will produce the most good and do the least harm? That's one. Number two. Which option best respect, re respects the rights of all who have a stake in the issue? That's number two. Number three, which option treats people equally or proportionally? That's number three. Number four, which option best serves the community as a whole, not just some of its members? And the last one, which option leads me to act as the sort of person I want to be, all right? So here's a case study. We got, and I got a few of them. I, was, I had fun making them, doing it. So, um, uh, and these are some of the sort of ethical choices, actually, you have to make while being a student here. So one of them, number one, is called, and um, if any of you attended last year's lecture, can I just see your hand? OK, I'll, oh, well, th thank you. Oh, God bless you for coming back. Mm, all right. Mm. All right. Well, you know this much. Um, um, I expect participation. And if you don't answer, I call on you anyway. <laughs> so um, just know that for those of you who are new here. But I want us to look at some issues here and look at some of the ethical ramifications around choice and, and the choices of how you would render a choice in this issue. So the first one, I, and uh, I, wanted, I want to hear from some of you, is, is what I title do my parents belong in my business now that I'm in college? All right? Here's the case here. Now that you're 18, aren't you an adult with adult responsibilities? But my parents want to be involved, especially when they're paying the bill. Should your parents have a say in your choice of major? That's question number one. And number two, do they have a right to see my grade? All right? What do you think? Okay, come on. Talk to me. I don't think that they have a right in your choice of major, but I think if your parents are paying for college, I do think that they have the right to see your grades. Because if you're just playing around in like, your first year, that's a waste of money. And college is expensive. Okay. Well, what are some other thoughts on that? Because look, if you're going to show them the grades, why can't they be privy to the, to the major? Because your major. I believe because your major is your own choice. Like, my mom could be a teacher and my dad could be a lawyer. What if I don't want to go into law? Or what if I don't want to be a teacher? What if I want to be a psychologist? That's my choice. I wouldn't mind that because then you can pay your loans or the loans I took out to send you up in here. But okay. But all right. But come on, I need some thoughts on this. Should, should your parents see your grades? And should they know you're making? Okay. When the parents make the choice, Like, like don't, don't major in the arts, arts and sciences, sciences or, or, or really you think so so that discussion should have been but see okay but the argument would be that they didn't know what they're going to you know they, they, most of us don't know what we're going to major in until we get to college at least at least i didn't 
and then didn't know then until, well, it was really for me where I had the most credit because I didn't have time to think about really a serious major. Come on, what do you think? Do your pet, please. You know, or, or I learned how to, you know, basket weave. What do you think? Come on, who thinks differently? Please, come on. Um, I also agree that you should make your own choice of what you want to do later in your life. They might think something differently, but it's your choice of what you're happy with. But um, poor grades, like, personally, I don't think that it matters really because, yes, they're paying for it, but they will know if you're doing Yeah, but you know some of y'all are good liars. Come on now, come on. You know, you know, you know how to work it. Come on. Some some thoughts on this, really? Go, please. Okay. Mm-hmm. You like it? Okay. Okay. Come on. Some other. Any other thoughts on this? Come on. Who thinks differently? Um, that um, they shouldn't, they, they shouldn't, on both of the questions, they shouldn't interfere with your major, and they, and they shouldn't see your grades. Go ahead, please. Sometimes seems like a long slog for Christina. I just made up these cases here, okay? So I don't know Christina. So if Christina, is there Christina in here? Because girlfriend, I didn't know you until this moment, okay? All right. But between the PSATs, the SATs, the APs, the ACTs, her GPA, her sports practices, um, and her job tutoring, everything was oriented towards polishing her resume and getting her into college. She went through the entire application process because that's what everyone expected her to do. Now she was in, an undeclared freshman. She couldn't help wondering, what was she doing here? So question number one. Was it right for her to be spending so much of her parents' money on college 
when she didn't even know what she wanted to study? And number two, was she taking the slot of someone else who would have really known what they wanted to do with their education? What do you think? Okay, come on. You know, it's interesting when we talk about um, making choices in our lives. A lot of times we think that young adults don't make good choices. But in, uh, the, the, the answers that I hear so far, there's been some critical thinking about, about your choices. Some other, some other thoughts on this? Please, back there, please. One of the questions, it seems, is, is an education, uh, is the purpose of it to gain knowledge, or is it a commodity? Well, that's the question. Absolutely. But see, but then there's the reality, though. See, there's a reality here. The reality here is that, listen, you can come and say, I'm going for an education, but at the end of those four years, you got to get a J-O-B. And society pushes you in that direction. You know, so a lot of times your, your, your major is really dictated by a job market. Um, if you read certain, uh, you know, newspapers, they say, well, the, the best majors, you know, I don't know uh, what they are this year since everybody seems to be unemployed uh, when they graduate. But there were years, I know particularly when I was graduating, they said, well, the golden, you know, degree was finance. Uh, so you, you had a bumper crop of students who went into, went for MBAs. Uh, one year was computer science. Uh, I don't know what it is this year. Anybody knows what it is for this graduating class? What's the golden ticket? But the golden ticket my year was finance. And then the question is this. Should you really be in college now, considering how the economy is? Yeah. OK. Now, what, what I know this is a lot of you who are ed, who are ed majors here. OK, right. And, and I thank you all, because what, what I hear from Professor Restico is that many of you will be going into teaching in city schools. And thank you, because I am a part of of, the, of, the, of Brooklyn City Schools, and, and Professor Rustico said that she too is a product of, 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 of the city schools. But a lot of the city schools are dying. Um, money is being you know, funneled elsewhere. Uh, what keeps you in this major? What keeps your interest in this major? Um, as, as I speak to you now, I, particularly if you're in your freshman and sophomore year, I know you don't have a job. What keeps you going? Go ahead, please speak up. Passion. Passion, you gotta say, but okay, but you know what someone will say now? I, and, and do know I'm playing devil's advocate here. Passion would say, um, but that's not gonna pay the mortgage. Well, you won't have a mortgage, okay? Uh, that's not gonna pay the rent or the, or the loan. Sally Mae, how about that? Because Sally Mae will, Sally Mae will find you, okay? Okay, no matter how many times you move, Sally Mae looking for you, okay? Once you have that mentor degree. Please, so, so, so you got to say more than, okay, passion, but what else? Please go ahead. Well, well I'm a child psych major, and the reason is because I really want to give back and help my community. I feel like there's a lot of people in the community that's like depressed or, you know, just going through different things. And I feel like if they pass the one there, they talk to them, they're the one who made it out of the, like, who went to college and followed their dreams. Then they are the ones that are going to get back. 
Okay, okay, others? Go ahead, please. Um, I'm also um, working towards helping uh, my community in a different country, but um, I'm a marketing major and I hope to get into economics at some point after my MBA. So it, it is really a long-term goal that's really keeping me in school and, and you know, making me try to succeed and do my best. And also the fact that the network that comes out of this and the people that you meet, they tend to, you tend to, you know, develop a close knit of friendships as you leave school. So it's not just about academics, it's about other things. Okay, okay. Any others, please? I can't hear you. Four. Not four, but you know. Like your course in college. Right, right. right. So I don't want to be four. I just want to. <laughs> yes, yes, okay. I want money. You want money? Okay, girlfriend. <laughs> you know what? Um, uh, Mega Millions, the pot is real. Uh, I, I agree with you. Okay, go ahead now. All right. Okay, absolutely. All right. All right, well, those are two examples of, of choices that you can make, and you're not, you, 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 there's some constraints there. But, 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 but you can, you're, you're making these choices, some out of passion, some out of naivete, some out of hope, just all, all sorts of reasons. Um, and they're all a good reason. But there's sometimes we think we're making a choice, and we really don't know. So I want you to listen to this one, and tell me if you think this student is making a choice. And then we're going to talk about this um, for at least uh, five to ten minutes here because this is an important topic. This here is called, Should I Date My Professor? <laughs> All right? Should I Date My Professor? Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because of lighting. I can't see very well here. It says, it all started when Franny, a 19-year-old sophomore, went to work as a student assistant in the English department. She had gotten a recommendation for the job from Professor Bill Smith, who had been her professor in the survey course called British Literature that she took last semester. The class had been so lively and engaging that Franny was thinking of declaring herself as an English major. After she started working for the department, Professor Smith always stopped at the reception desk and spent some time chatting with her. As they got to know each other better, it seemed natural that Professor Smith asked her questions like whether she had big plans for the weekend or whether she had a boyfriend waiting for her back home. But then she began to notice other signals that maybe he was interested in more than the usual professor-student relationship. He, put, he would put her hands over hers for a moment while they talked. And he brought her collection, and forgive me if you didn't know this, but this, this uh, reference, but that's all I could think of when putting this together. Uh, he brought her a collection of love letters from Elizabeth Barrett to Robert Browning. Franny was actually, you're laughing, right? Because that's old school, forgive me. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything. Okay. Franny was actually quite flattered by his attention. True, he was probably well in his 30s, but he was still cute, and he was a lot more mature and interesting than the boys she met on campus, whose idea of a good time was a beer party. Franny was pretty sure Professor Smith would ask her out if she gave the right signals. Should she get involved with Professor Smith? No. <laughs> Is she making a choice? No, should she get involved? Let's talk about that. No. Why? Why? But, but we gotta know why though. Why? What? What we say? Why? And don't just say because he's old. Okay. <laughs> what? Why? You say he's unprofessional. That's not good enough. That won't be a good enough reason to stop somebody. Come on. Go ahead, please. You. Okay. All right. 
it because we want to we want to really talk about this. So it should be her choice. Okay, okay. Come on, who I, I need to hear some more. Um, I need to hear some more thoughts on that. Well, go ahead. Affirming and uh, blind doctors, patients, teachers, students. You gotta say more. That's not gonna stop somebody, Cause especially when you tell somebody not to do something. Come on, why? One of the things is here, and, and you hit on it, okay. All relationships, whether you're cognizant of it or not, all relationships are relationships of power. So the question is here, if Professor Smith is coming on to Franny, does she have a choice to really say no? You say, you say, say more about that. She may think that he likes her, but he may not at all. It may just think that she's a really good student and wants to help her in the future, like figure herself out. But I, it might, like, you know, if she thinks it might, he might not be thinking the same thing. Okay, come on, go ahead. Come back to that. Okay, now you have to tell me whether you were in the high chair, the playpen, or not born at all. Okay, do you remember Bill Clinton and a Monica Lewinsky incident? Okay, all right. All right, so what, what we understand about that, uh, what we know publicly, was that uh, there was a sexual relationship, okay, between Bill Clinton and, and Monica Lewinsky. Um, some say that Bill came on to, to Monica and others tell stories that Monica came on to, to, um, to, to, to President Bill Clinton. This is the question I want to ask you now. If you're looking at it from the, the issue of power, and, and you've got to understand all relationships are relationships of power, whether you're cognizant of it or not, whether you want to claim it or not, okay? If you are the President of the United States and the President comes on to you, do you have an option to say no? Yes. Do, okay, let's, okay, let me, okay, because I, I want to hear this. Do you, do you really have an option to say no? Okay, she was, she was, um, she was a, oh, what, what was her position? She went there as a, um, as an intern, so the whole idea that that uh, she goes there to curry favor, um, to 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 advance her career, so she's got to think of these things here, and, and we're going to get back to the student Franny. She's got to think of her 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 career here. The reason why she's in Washington is simply because she wants access to power. She wants to advance her career. Now, if she says no. To President Bill Clinton, what might be some of the reprisals? What you say? I can't hear you. You have to speak up. What? No, no, no. Come here. Wait, wait, wait. Because we got to hear this because you because this is this is really important in terms of understanding power differentials here, and the choices you think you're making, and you're really not making because you're not carefully critiquing or analyzing the power dynamics that are hinged into that relationship. But please, you, we, I want to hear what, what you were saying. It's just one bad reference. Like, big deal, just the President of the United States. Like, once they're out of office, people are, like, I know people remember the presidents, but it's, like, it's going to be forgotten in, like, three or four years, you know, unless someone re-brings it up. Like, okay, but, 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 but we're in the moment, though. I mean, like, okay, I mean, you know, right, he's out of office, and who cares about his various 
you know, relationships other than prayer, and not even Hillary for that, for that matter. But, but nonetheless, though, the point is, is that the president has come on to you. Come on, what, what are you going to say? I think I, I kind of disagree with the reference thing. I feel like, I mean, he's the president. He has a lot of power, and I feel like if he does try to come on, on to you, like, I feel like you have a choice. Like, he could probably have a career, you, but I feel like you got to <laughs> weigh those options. But personally, me, I would say I, I wouldn't. I would back up and be like, no, but he has a lot of power, so you have to be careful. That's right. Now, okay, uh, let's come on. Some other thoughts. If the president comes on to you, okay, because some will say that it's your patriotic duty. <laughs> that is pushing it, isn't it? But some will, some will push it like that. Go ahead. You back there. I can't see because of the light. Yeah, if the, uh, if the come on comes with a threat from a, a boss or a professor or the president, um, either you do this or you'll be punished, that's one thing. If, the, if you are afraid because it might, you might get it back. He might, he might not care. He might hit on 12 women a day and you're one of the 11 that turns him down, big deal. If it comes with a specific threat, that's another issue. But you may not be cognizant of that threat. Because, because one of the question would be is, is that, you know, he did it because he can do it. Yes. Okay? But you don't know why he did it other than that he can do it. Right. Okay? So, what, what do you do now? You're ambitious. You want a career. This could this this could kill it. Now you spend all this energy, this time, and you can say, well, look, it's maybe just one night. All right, whatever. You know, I mean, however you have to negotiate this. Okay, but th this is quite serious. You you can't you can't say something like, oh, he'd be out of office soon. Yeah, he will be. But right now he want to be in bed with you. Okay, so that's real. And so. Go ahead, please. What are you going to say? know your grades is you know all this this you 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 will handle very well because they, that even though there is some power differential there your parents all this there won't be an abuse of power and you don't have to worry about your career being just totally demolished but some of you will be in situations here you've worked hard you've gotten your degree here from Bay Path College this is something to really look at I want to hear your example, but I want uh, your, your 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 explanation. But I want to give you one more woman, okay? I don't know where y'all were. I don't know if you were born at this time, but it was it was it was in the '90s, early '90s. See how old I am, okay? And so, and soon I won't even remember any of this. But nonetheless, um, it was early '90s, '91, and um, Clarence Thomas was coming up for one of the most important positions on the court and the first black man to do so. So, I mean, there were a lot of implications around this. But Anita Hill, who worked with him, okay, um, brought, talked about um, 
his sexual harassment of her. The question still on the table is that, well, if he did all that, why did you follow him from job to job to job? Okay, it gets murky. Now, and so, so you, you gotta look at power differential. Yes, yeah, self-esteem is important, okay? But let me tell you, Anita Hill landed much better than Monica Lewinsky. She was a professor at the time at a university, um, a law professor at a university at Oklahoma. Uh, she lost that job. Um, and she was a tenured professor. And, and that's very hard to get rid of tenured professor. But because of a bunch of feminist women bringing up sexual harassment on the job, not that it, end, you know, it, it has ended, uh, Anita, Anita Hill luckily is here uh, at Brandeis. But she had, she had a net, you would say. You would say that's kind of the fervor of the feminist you know, movement. Not all, of you gonna, not all of you are gonna have that kind of public spectacle, nor would you want it. And not all of you are gonna have, uh, a, a, and it's not that I'm calling it a safety net, I'm just saying a net that caught her, okay? So, and you can have all the esteem you want. Um, and clearly, uh, where we might think of Monica Lewinsky as a little hoe, okay? a little hoochie mama, okay, who, who might be unethical, okay, and might do anything for a leg up in her profession. What, no pun intended, right, okay? The, the question here, okay, the question though, clearly we don't think that about Anita Hill, am I right? I mean, that's the public, we don't think that about that girl, that woman, okay? But my point is, no matter what kind of woman you are, hoochie mama or not, or Saint Maria, okay? We got to look at power differential. So, so the point is here. I mean, the question here is then, why would Anita Hill follow Clarence Thomas from job to smart girl from job to job to job? And the question is, of course, did Monica Lewinsky now really have a choice? Go ahead, please. Because, you know, 
she went through all of this and she tried to get a career. And in that moment, you know, whatever she was thinking in that moment when the question was asked, whatever was going through her mind, it turned out to be a very bad choice. Mm -hmm. If she didn't get caught, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if she didn't get caught, then I, I, nobody probably would have known about it. You know? And I don't know if she would have continued to, to be in the office, you know, but he did, he does have power over her. Okay. So Wait. whatever was going through her mind, the fact that he does have power over her would still be in the back of her mind. Okay. Hold that thought. Bill Clinton has power over her. Professor Smith in my little case has power over her. Okay. Um, Clarence Thomas certainly had power over Anita. I mean, because one would say that her behavior seemed erratic but for a particularly very sophisticated, educated woman. I want to take it one step further. Since Bill had power over her, what makes what he did not considered rape? I don't, I don't think you can push it that, that far into the rape thing because she still has she still has a choice. And I feel like nowadays there's so many so much technology, like he about like he's trying to like, you know, put moves on her. All she gotta do is go buy one of those little recorders and record it and then she she got her ticket out. I feel like it's so much. <laughs> she got her ticket out, huh? Like, 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 I'm pushing it to this question. What makes it not right then? I'm sorry. Well, go ahead, please. Because if she didn't say no, then that's not right. If oh. she willingly said yes. But my premise is this. Can you say no to the President of the United States, given his power, given how he can wreck your career, if not your entire life? Can you say no? And when you can't say no, um, what makes it not rape? And this is important. This really is important because, because these are the kinds of questions, choices, life choices. Because see, you have an image, we have all have an image of rape being violent, okay? Some, some, some crazed you know, you know, man violating a woman. Uh, but but we need to talk about this. Okay, please go ahead. The way I look at this, I really don't care if he's the president of the United States. No matter who it is, even if it's a professional sports player, they're a regular person too. Like they have to get like I believe that no matter who it is, they don't have power over you. If you say no, yeah, it might screw up your whole career, but choose another path. There's other options and. Someone might have respect for you for saying no. Okay, let me give you another example here, okay? You may not remember this. Kobe Bryant, um, some, some, some years ago, and I, I didn't like him before then, so I just want to, so if I get nasty talking about him, just know I didn't like the boy before this moment. Kobe Bryant uh, is a basketball player for LA, very well, well known and well received. And there was this incident in Colorado where the girl said um, she went up to his room because he said, come up there uh, and I'll give you a signed autograph. But she goes up there and she said she was raped. Kobe Bryant said it was consensual sex. The girl has a history of some instability, or if she, if she didn't, they certainly put it in the narrative to paint her very negatively. But the point about it is, one of the things that happened to Anita Hill that we don't talk about, and, she, and to be quite honest, you couldn't have any cleaner or stellar record than Anita Hill, especially compared to Monica Lewinsky, because she was a little hoe before she met Bill, okay? But even if you're a hoe, don't mean you, know, you, got all, you, know, you, you can't always say no, okay? But, but the point is, uh, Anita Hill's reputation was trashed. Didn't take too much to trash Monica Lewinsky's. The girl that claimed that Kobe Bryant um, violated her, uh, her career, I mean, um, well, we don't know anything about her career. Her reputation was trash. 
A lot of times, Anita Hill, what you don't know, had a nervous breakdown. We don't know what happened to Monica Lewinsky. We certainly don't know what happened to uh, the, the girl that Kobe Bryant violated. So my question is here, do we have an understanding about rape? I think like in that basketball, the basketball case thing, okay. like, I feel like usually when girls go to their room, I feel like, you know, they had something planned in mind. I feel like, you know. So they, they should know. know. So, so it's like, I feel like you, if you want an autograph, no, I'm not going to your room. Bro. Okay. So it's sort of like the girl that wears the really seductive outfit. Like she should have known not to be wearing that at that moment. No. Okay, in that because she asking for it. No, it's different from that. It's totally different. I feel like yes. I feel like you can wear what you want, but in that case, I feel like she didn't have no business going up to his room. But I do think it's three sides to a story. His side, her side, and the truth, which we would never know. So. That's <laughs> All right, all right, okay, come on now. Come on, what, what, what you think? I'm gonna get you next, go ahead. on campus or wherever, book club, hot yoga, whatever, okay? <laughs> whatever, wherever, I mean, but you see him enough times. You see him enough times, okay? Okay, but, 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 but you pick up a rapport, okay? There's something trusting about him, why not? He, he says, look, come up to my room, listen, wanna show you some whatever, no, not his penis, but wanna show you some stuff, okay? Whatever, please, come on. Uh, I mean, if Jason Veritek said, come up to my room, Okay. okay. There you go. Come on. You just don't like. You just don't like. You don't like Kobe Bryant. And I, and I also think it's really easy for people to say, "I wouldn't do that. It's not ethical. It's not professional. I wouldn't. I, I would. You know, I wouldn't do that with the president. I would do." It. It's really easy for us to say when it's hypothetical and there's nothing at stake. What we're trying to get at here is that these are very professional people who have landed themselves an internship in the White House. They're obviously going somewhere. And so to say no suddenly becomes, they, they start to make up reasons why it's okay, simply so that they don't have to say no. Because Thank it's you. harder to say no and deal with those ramifications in the moment than to say, oh, he's just pretending or he's just flirting, I'll go along with it for as long as I can. And then there's a certain line that's drawn, but we're not at that line yet, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, I just think it's easy for people to say on a hypothetical basis, and what she's saying is that the macro picture, you know, that those are top profile cases, and she's using those because we all know about them, but there are going to be micro cases in your lives where you have to make those decisions and you're worried about the ramifications either way. There you go. Oh, God, it's almost like, I, I, girl, I'm loving you. It's like I planted you, okay? okay. Then showed me some love, okay? Okay, listen, I, I'm love. We, we should do this together. No, I guess. Okay, all right. No, but do, do, you, do, do you follow that? Because the question is, come on. Now, the question is, I couldn't come up in here and say I'm going to talk about rape. I couldn't do that because you wouldn't want to talk to me. Really. But I may, and, and, you may dis, and you may still disagree with me, okay? But, but I, I want to leave you with this, and I'm just so annoyed because I only, have, I only have five more minutes with you here. You girls will graduate and be professional women. You will be Monica, well, maybe not Monica. <laughs> okay. But you will be the Anita Hills. Come on. You, you, you will be professional women, okay? You have worked hard to get where you got. You don't want one moment of some jackass who, who happens to have power over you to, to, to trash and ruin your entire, all you work for, your entire professional life, which will also wreak havoc on you emotionally. 
And so the question is, rape is important to understand because we understand it as this violent nut coming out of a bush, you know, um, you know, with the phallus hanging, <laughs> okay? If not flaccid, then erect, you know? Attacking you. But it's much more alluring and it's much more subtle and much more nuanced. And so I'll leave you with this question. And please think about it. Did, and I know you don't like the hoochie mama, but I always thought about Monica Lewinsky. And the question really is, did she have a choice to say no? Bill Clinton was president of the United States. And we could sum it up and say, a man will be a man. Yes, a man will be a man. But he was the president of the United States. He has power over that young woman. Pat said it. Who's going to hide a hoe? OK? All right? And the real question is this, something that you might not want ever think about. And it may be just too dramatic and too harsh to think about it. Because you can't say, well, did he seduce? Well, you can say this. Did he seduce Monica Lewinsky? But better yet, my question is this, and that's an ethical question. Did he rape her? Thank you. Oh, oh, I got time for Q, wait, Q&A. Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm trying to adhere to what Professor Restico say that I know some of you folks have um, have to go at five and stuff. And you can challenge me on what I've done, too. You can say, look, you know what? I think you crazy. OK, you can say that. Like, this is just crazy. But really, let's talk. Oh, you're speechless. OK, please, please, please. I can't see. I have to come down. I really can't see. So let me just put this stuff down, because I, I can't see from here. And it makes my eyes just tear, excuse me, just that much more. OK, what were you going to say? Do you think she was right? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because um, the power over. Uh, and, and see, one of the things is that as much as she is this uh, coochie mama, uh, she is, I think, how was she old? She was 20, 21? No, no more than that. She couldn't even do that. She was 21. OK, we, we forget that just because some women come across sassy, and got it together. Um, first of all, she's somebody's daughter. Um, that a lot of that stuff of her is an exterior. Um, we don't know what was on her mind. Uh, we, but the point was is that Bill Clinton took advantage of the fact that he had power over her, and the fact that she was seductive or flirtatious, he, he took even more more advantage of that. You know, let me tell you a, a quick a quick story. So. Now, you, you folks weren't born then, because I was just coming in the world to myself. But JFK um, was a man born. That's, oh, that's the best thing I can say. He would see women uh, any place, whether it was you know, at the theater, uh, at a summit meeting, at the golf, at, at his compound, and would summit women uh, to have sex with them. Um, and do know that some of them probably felt honored, uh, but some may not have and felt that they couldn't say no. Um, and we can just say this in that, um, well, you know, it's a man being a man, but it's still an abuse of power. Go ahead, please. Can you hear her? Yeah. Okay.
more clearly that she was in a terrible situation. He didn't physically have to hold her arms down and rape her. He could do it financially. How many student, how much in student loans was she looking at? Could she afford to go four years until he's out of office before she gets her first job if she got $60,000 worth of loans? And everybody in the Democratic Party will hire her if Bill says hire her, and nobody will hire her. Pay for the Republicans. Now, the Republicans would have been a place to look for a job. <laughs> <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? She, the forces holding her arms while that man did whatever he did weren't the ones we're talking about when they jumped out of the bush. But they were powerful forces. A man was abusing his power with a 21-year-old and he was about 50 some years old. So I like leading into the hardest question with that gentler question. It's easier to... Yeah, 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 yeah. Please back, back there. Another uh, similar... Can you question. talk about twins? Sure, yeah. Another um, type of situation that may not be something like sexual would be a whistleblower. Mm -hmm. If you see something wrong at school or you see something wrong in one of your classes or at your job, is it, are you so afraid to lose your job that you wouldn't? That's right. So that's, it's a, it's a parallel situation. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. What about kids' choices? Say, Mark, can, can you flesh that out for me? What do you mean? Again, once again, thank you so, so much for inviting me.